everyone, what's going on? So yesterday, I was going to a wedding, and I was looking up the what time that Michigan played, and on the ESPN headlines, I noticed that there was this headline story set that said, UCLA not focusing on winless start under Kelly. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm not always right when I, when I talk about a team that I think might win the game, but the storyline that I am talking about, it absolutely exists. And if you're new to this and you don't know, your sports leagues are scripted and they're, they're using themes and they're also using this practice of coding numbers into words and phrases, which is called gematria. And every day our mainstream media is coded with this system. So if you don't understand, check out some links in the description. But since 2015, I have been talking about the connection between Nebraska and UCLA and how it connects to the movie Teen Wolf. And what are the odds that this year UCLA, they did win yesterday, but what are the odds? It start They start off 0-5 and, and Nebraska starts off 0-5. And, and everything that I talked about with Nebraska and UCLA, I said it was connected to the Kansas City Chiefs and also to the Los Angeles, or to the Rams in general. And I'm going to explain that, but think about it. The Chiefs start off 5-0, and the Rams start off 5-0, and and then we have UCLA doing the opposite, and Nebraska doing the opposite. 0-5, oh right? What are the odds of this? And that is stuff I've been talking about since 2015. And in 2015, the pattern that I noticed was in the NBA, during the NBA All-Star Week, it fell over this this ancient Roman festival called Lupercalia. You can look this up, Lupercalia. It's from February 13th through February 15th, and that's when the All-Star Week fell that year. And on the first day of this, we had Andrew Wiggins, who was a Minnesota Timberwolf, and he was also a teenager, so he was a teen wolf, he won the MVP of the Rising Star Challenge. And what was interesting about that is he got traded to Minnesota for Kevin Love, who played for UCLA. And then the next night on Valentine's Day, the second day of Lupercalia, we had Zach Levine win the slam dunk contest doing the Space Jam dunk, remember? And he was also a teenager at the time, so he was a teen wolf. And he just so happened to play for UCLA. And then on the All-Star game we had Russell Westbrook who played for UCLA and he won the MVP of the All-Star game. And on Valentine's Day that year we even had Kevin Looney was the best player of the game for UCLA. Think about Looney Tunes, Space Jam. Talked about how it's connected to the Gold State Warriors who went went on to win the NBA Finals and then the next year Kevin Looney got drafted to them. And we also had Denzel Valentine hit the game winner that day on Valentine's Day. But it was all of this stuff synced up to UCLA. And in the movie Teen Wolf, if you go watch the movie Teen Wolf, it's not set or filmed in Nebraska. There's palm trees in the movie. Yet within the background of the movie, they have Nebraska Cornhusker stuff all over. There's like a, a sticker in the coach's office that says Nebraska Cornhuskers. There's a license plate that says Nebraska on it and everything else. There's a bunch of Nebraska Cornhusker stuff, a calendar in the background. It really makes absolutely no sense for that to be in there. But the, when he becomes the wolf, he even joins a school play that's about the Civil War. Think about Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska, you know. And the reason that stuck out even more is because in 2015, the coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers just so happened to be Mike Riley. This guy right here, Mike Riley, and he's known for coaching the Oregon State Beavers. And if you look up the movie Teen Wolf, the mascot that they use in the movie, the Beaver, it's based off of the Oregon State Beaver. So what are the odds Nebraska's coach that year comes from the Oregon State Beavers and... Nebraska had a 5-7 and seven record, and somehow they still got a bowl game that year, and they ended up going to the Foster Farms Bowl to play UCLA and win. And they played that in, in San Francisco in Levi's Stadium. And 
That's where the Super Bowl was held later that year, too. Super Bowl 50 was held in Levi's Stadium. And what I talked about was how it's all a giant Moses tribute. Moses, in history, he freed the slaves, just like we're told Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. And think about Nebraska, how they play in the Sea of Red. And Moses parted the Red Sea. And Levi's Stadium in San Francisco, Moses was in the tribe of Levi. And what Moses did was he actually brought in the age of Aries in the Zodiac, the age of Aries, and Aries is a ram. So now think about that as well with the, the Rams having a good season this year and also the Kansas City Chiefs who also play in the Sea of Red. It's, you know, super connected to Moses. And Super Bowl 50 just so happened to be the Super Bowl where we had the Black Panther tribute. It was the, the Carolina Panthers versus the Denver Broncos, the, the Black Panther versus the White Bronco, then the halftime show. Beyonce did the whole X thing that was all connected to, you know, the racism and the Black Panthers who originated from the San Francisco Bay Area. Then later that year, in the start of the 2016 season, we had Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, and he plays for the 49ers, right? San Francisco, he takes a knee. They start all of this racial division and not standing during the national anthem with the 49ers. And Chip Kelly, who is the coach of UCLA now, Chip Kelly, after he left from the Eagles, he went on to coach for the 49ers the same year that Colin Kaepernick didn't stand or whatever, right? So Chip Kelly was the coach of the 49ers when Colin Kaepernick refused to stand. Now he's the coach of UCLA, who starts off with a terrible record, just like the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And another thing, would you believe that Scott Frost, the coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, when Chip Kelly was coaching at Oregon, Scott Frost was also one of the coaches there. He was like a wide receivers and quarterbacks coach. So these two guys even have a connection. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And remember, when, when Chip Kelly went to the Eagles, he replaced Andy Reid, who was the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, it's such a joke. And also the Chiefs had Alex Smith, who left the 49ers because of the controversy with Colin Kaepernick in the Super Bowl 47, right? I mean, it is just a cluster of these crazy themes. They, they make them all interrelated this way. But I, I have to make a really short video. I got to work in five minutes, but just wanted to make a quick video showing a whole bunch of this stuff because it's the same thing over and over, you know? That, that Teen Wolf thing even, Kevin Garnett was the original Teen Wolf. And after Zach Levine and Andrew Wiggins had the big deal over Lupercalia, Kevin Garnett even got traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves that year. You know, the original Teen Wolf went back to the Minnesota Timberwolves and whatnot. And one last thing is, where did my blog, where did my thing go here? Oh, it's right here. One last thing that I thought was interesting and how it all syncs up is Within all of this, and there's a whole lot more, I'm, just, I'm skipping over a lot because there's a lot to re-explain, but a big thing that I was talking about with all of this was also how it was connected to Batman and a possible earthquake at the Super Bowl, which is, and a lot of it had to do with an East Coast earthquake around Philadelphia, and that's why I thought the Eagles would be in the Super Bowl last year because we got that 4.1 East Coast earthquake, or, you know, wasn't East Coast, but on the east side of the United States, we got the 4.1 earthquake in November, and Super Bowl equals 41, and the Eagles went on to win with 41 points. But I was talking about this earthquake that was synced up to Philadelphia, and that earthquake was even supposedly felt in Philadelphia. But a big deal with that stuff was I was talking about the movie Happy Gilmore and how he learns how to putt on the earthquake golf course. and then the building that falls over looks like the Comcast Center in Philadelphia. And what's interesting about that is there was a bunch of 99 stuff in connection to that. Like Adam Sandler is born on 9-9 and they tell it, 
Shooter McGavin says to meet him at the ninth green at nine and a bunch of other stuff. But this year's the 99th season of the NFL, which sticks out to me. And in regards to, there was all this Batman symbolism as well. And it just sticks out to me because recently I've been documenting, I documented about Bruce Almighty that had Morgan Freeman, who was really important to this Batman theme. And he's also in the movie Oblivion about the destruction at the, you know, I had the destruction at the, the last Super Bowl and whatever. He's really important to what was going on, the sum of all fears where they have the attack at the, the football game and whatnot. And if you remember Christian Bale, who plays Batman in that the Dark Knight movie, he also went on to play in the movie called Exodus, and he played the character of Moses. So, like I said, I, I got to work in like three minutes. So, I'll leave some links in the description when I post this, or maybe I'll just redo the whole video and just make it later tonight. But I know I'm going to be tired and then not going to want to do it. But just wanted to make a point that it's so obvious to me, you know, I don't always know who's going to win the game, but even the things that I'm talking about, they always reappear. You know, the odds that UCLA is having a bad season, just like Nebraska talked about how they're connected and they're connected to the chiefs and the Rams and the chiefs and the Rams are both the only two undefeated teams in the NFL right now. So, it's also interesting that on Monday night this week, we have the Packers play the 49ers, and the Packers are the team that Colin Kaepernick originally knelt against when all the controversy really began. So, some things to uh, look forward to, to, to keep an eye on and whatnot. So, But anyway, have a good one. Peace.